Hey, it's Freiberger, and I'm about to show you a sample episode of a show that we do on MotorTrendOnDemand.com that's called Roadkill Extra. It shows up every single weekday. It's got stuff like outtakes from shows, behind the scenes stuff, tech tips, you name it. You can see them all with a free trial at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. <laughs> hey, this is Roadkill Expert. You usually go first. And we're going to do a Q&A with myself and Finnegan. And uh, I'm sweating. It's yeah, really the hot. breeze just disappeared. Completely stopped. All we have now are flies. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking on me. Um, we're in the middle of Riverside, California, and we're shooting an episode of Roadkill. And so we thought we'd stop and do a Q&A session because we're waiting for tires to show up. Um, Good place to vacation, Riverside, California, let me tell you. Actually, have you been to the Mission Inn here? It's actually really good. No. Yeah, no. cool old place. Tom Edwards uh, has a question I see a lot, so I figured we should answer it, which is, whatever happened to the Super Ute? People are oh. pretty sure that uh, the Mighty Car Mods guys gave us the car that they built for that episode that we did with them, and they didn't. A friend of mine almost ended up with it. They, when they were done, um, I think they had about four grand into it. They said, and they were willing to sell it to uh, two of my buddies, one of which I'm marrying in three or four weeks, which is awesome. I thought you were already married. No, no, I'm married. Oh, wait, that didn't sound good at all. Um, <laughs> no, no, I'm going to go on the internet, get some sort of license, and I'm going to marry. You're going to officiate my sister-in-law and her. I'm going to officiate. That's it. Right. That sounds better. I'm going to officiate a wedding between my sister-in-law and her uh, fiance. And uh, he was real close to dropping 3,500 bucks to buy the Subaru Ute. And then I think he decided against it. So Marty took it to Vegas for SEMA, hung yeah. out with some other Subaru guys. After that, I don't know. Marty went home. I don't know where the thing is. I don't know where it is either. So that's a question for Mighty Car Mods guys. Ask them what happened to that car. I, I know they didn't take it back to Australia with them. So it's here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That thing was sweet. And we still have the Impala that was in that episode, and I dropped it off at, uh, at Copeland's place mm -hmm. and had to put a whole fuel system in the thing so it won't run out of fuel at the top end anymore. How about stripping the lower for boost? No, hasn't done that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Next year. It'll just be slow. <laughs> um, Arthur Reindick has another question that I see all the time, which is, <laughs> are, <laughs> sorry, are you guys planning on going on cool road trips anytime in the future? You know, don't just build a car and thrash it, but actually hit the road, see junkyards like you did with the Ranchero. So this is something we want to do all of the time. And the reason that we don't is, I think we've found out that it's really risky to make up episodes by just hopping in a car and hitting the road and hoping that stuff will happen. Because when nothing goes wrong, there's no episode and you guys tell us that it's boring. Yeah, we're not making it up. Like, case in point, Harry Toe. Super boring. Truck didn't break. Nothing uh, went wrong. The wagon that the kids uh, in Indy picked for us, nothing broke. Super boring. <laughs> and uh, we, we just, you know, we don't feel right making the drama up, so, yeah. Yeah, you can't predict a car is going to break because that's really what everyone likes to see is us getting stranded and overcoming obstacles and continuing to go. But if we don't get stranded, then there's no show. And that's kind of why we don't do that. But You can usually count on cars breaking, the old ones. It's weird. Like, we get lucky sometimes. The classic is the car will run perfectly the whole time it's on camera, and as soon as the video guys pack up and leave and you try and drive home, that's when the car breaks down. Remember when that's we got stranded? Where? The 55 Chevy that we drove oh, it yeah, from yeah. L.A. to North Carolina, got there, we did a photo shoot for Hot Rod Magazine. I don't even think it ever went in Hot Rod Magazine. And then everyone left, cameras went away, he and I jumped in the car to drive back to the hotel, Dead. wouldn't run. <laughs> And Dead. we fought it and fought it and fought it and it For was hours. a coil. Yeah. Remember, we even did a test and it was throwing a spark, but, but just not good enough. Yeah, the next day it was still throwing a spark and I had already rewired half the car, called everybody I knew that was an EFI expert. And I'm sitting there going, it has fuel, it has spark. Why will this not run? And I finally, I was staring at it going, that's the weakest spark I've ever seen. Yeah. So I went and bought an MSD blaster coil, shoved a bolt in it, taped the coil wire to it because it didn't fit. It fired right up. Yeah. And I drove it to Georgia that way it's with that crazy. coil in there. So That's our luck. Roadkill happens off camera, too. That happened on the, the last episode with Tony. That El Camino, we hopped in it, got about five miles down the road. Oh, I saw that. Died, and it was a coil. And yeah. it was the same thing. Bought another blaster coil, another bolt, I saw. taped it, fixed. Worked. Yeah. 
weird. So. so here's something that happened to me in Dulcich on Roadkill Garage a while back. Three brand new distributors, HEIs, from the parts store, dead. Different brands. Wow. Brand new. Like hook them up, wire them, spin them by hand, nothing. Whoa. Yeah. I wonder, three different brands, but are they all coming from the same place? So those Probably. three brands getting them from... That is my guess. Wow. Yeah, it was really annoying. Okay, Hector Jacques <clears throat> Giovanni Lima. Nice work. Has, yeah, I know, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has a question that I also see all the time that I find ironic. Remember when Dodge first sponsored us and everybody lost their mind and called us sellouts and they didn't want to see new cars on the show and all that other kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. And now, I just <clears throat> get deluged with people asking when we're going to do an episode with a demon. You hear that, don't you? Uh, that's a rad car. Yeah. Like, we, we have almost had a demon since like last November. And for various reasons, um, it yeah. keeps falling apart. It keeps getting delayed. And we still haven't had one, but I, I, I'm still hopeful we will get one. Um, I talked to the guys at Dodge at Roadkill Nights and again last week about that. And I cannot reveal to the audience, but you've heard my idea about what I want to do. Yeah. I got the... Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's, it's on. It, it's, well, <laughs> theoretically, it's well, on. Theoretically, I'll, it's I'll on. believe it when I'm standing in there. <laughs> but, uh, yes, we will have a demon at some point, and we're looking forward to it. Rick O'Neill Jr. says, not on Roadkill, but on Hot Rod Garage and on Dirt Every Day, why don't Lucky and Dirthead Dave ever drive the build vehicles? I never really noticed that. Uh, Lucky gets um, um, vertigo. Uh, vertigo. He yeah. gets dizzy. Yeah, so he doesn't like riding for donuts and stuff like that. Um, Dave, I don't know the answer other than he's an ex-mini trucker and maybe that's gotten something to do with it. I think uh, Fred just likes to drive. Kinda FYI, like he, like to drive. <laughs> he used to be Lil Dave. It was on the oh, back window of his there. truck. So. You revealed it! <laughs> <laughs> he had a he had a bagged and body dropped Sonoma and said Lil Dave on the back window. Go mini trucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I was thinking about mini trucks the other day. Good. About how you can virtually not buy a new one anymore. I know. And I went and I looked up Colorados. Mm. You now can't buy a Colorado regular cab anymore. Yeah, and it's practically a full size truck if you compare it to one from twenty years ago. It's bigger than an S10, but it's still smaller than a Dakota. When they're in the parking lot, like uh, when I used to work at the office there with you um, and Motor Trend was doing truck of the year testing, I saw what I thought was a Silverado in the parking lot and it was a Colorado. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're big trucks. They're, they're, it's not a mini truck. And I don't, it's hard to even call it a midsize. They're so roomy now. I don't think that a Colorado is that big. I do. Really? Yeah. I think they're okay. I feel like uh, I have a Tundra at home, like a 2010. I know. I accidentally called it a Tacoma in an earlier Q&A, and people jumped all over me for it. That's the same shit. Same thing. Um, and uh, I swear the Colorado looks bigger than that Tundra does. Hmm. Not to me. I have no practical experience other than walking through the parking lot, though. Let's clarify. I've never driven one. So while he was in the middle of that, your phone went off. Yeah, sorry. Finnegan has the most annoying collection of cell phone sounds ever. I didn't know it was annoying. Dude, the, what's the one with the ding, clown, ding, 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 the ding, 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 the like clown one? And, All my and friends the clown are clown horn. A lot of my friends are clowns. So. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> when they text, I have to know. I never want to hear that. I, I think it's like a jackpot one. Oh, it was the pinball machine. The pinball one. machine. Yeah. That's what it is. I've ruined a lot of takes on Roadkill when I forget to shut that thing off. <laughs> can't stand that that ring i don't know why and i'll hear it out in public with somebody else and i'll go why is finnegan here <laughs> it's not it's someone else uh fred petke says what does the average month look like for you guys how long are you on the road how many days involved in filming for an episode and extras and everything so i'm at least a week on roadkill sometimes more i'm five days every month on roadkill garage and three to four times a year i'm out for a week <clears throat> on engine masters and then September's always a week of drag week. SEMA's always a, a week in late October. Um, I don't do power tour anymore. I had to pull the plug on that one just because I'm gone too much. I believe Dave's yeah. cloned himself. We have to look for, you know, variances. You ever see the movie Multiplicity with Michael Keaton? Where each clone of him is a little more dumb than the one before it. <laughs> uh, this is stage 25. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder true. which one we're getting on Roadkill here. Yeah, no, that's probably <laughs> it. I'm, I'm way down there. You know what has really been ruined is my memory. I have nothing left. I, I, I don't know. When, when I first met Freiberger, I was overwhelmed with how he could recall the smallest details of things 30 years or 40 oh, like years before. Like camp specs and stuff like that. I used to be able to. Yeah. 
Um, but now I think it's just, I have this theory where you can only bring so much in before you have to start spitting something out of your brain. And you're just too busy now. You're trying to keep track of tire sizes for nine different cars for four, di- four different shows, and it's just not possible. Yeah, so it's true. You need an assistant. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not very good at this. I know. Uh, okay, I kind of, of like this one. Nate Gwynn. If you could build a vehicle from any time in history, what would you build and during what era would you build it? Okay, imagine how good you could be at drag racing, knowing what you know now and Mm. going back to like 1955. Oh man. Yeah, you could be the Don Garlitz of then. Jesus. If you, knowing what you knew now. Even even 10 years ago, because I've learned, I, I tend to learn everything the hard way. I read a lot and then I just go do. I, I don't really have any ins- professional instruction at things. So even if I could just go back 10 years knowing what I know now, I would have not lost nearly as much as I did over stupid self-induced mistakes. I guess what I'm talking about more is just technology transfer. All the stuff that's been revealed over <clears throat> the years about how things work Yeah. that wasn't known as well back then to as many guys. Red is positive, black is negative. Dude, you take that back. <laughs> 30, well, they didn't 40 know years. that in England. No. <laughs> they did positive Earth stuff all the time. No, you're right. I mean, if we had, you know, just tire technology. If you could take today's, that would be huge. today's tire back 30 or 40 years and just go drag racing and start out with a thousand bucks in your pocket, <laughs> I'd be Don freaking Schumacher. <laughs> I know it. Man. Yep, that would be big. All right, I'm looking for one last question. Often we get the same questions over and over, and that tells me that people want answers to them, but it also, I'm tired of answering them. I'll answer it this time, go ahead. Okay, I'll find a cliche one. Let's do the cliche. Uh, Let's see. Extra Uh, large. Okay, here's one. This is fairly common, but I don't think it's been answered that many times. Okay. Brandon Peterson, who was the very first person to name Roadkill, and what did you think of it at the time? We have Brandon Gologli. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's what it is. It is. I asked Brandon about it, and he couldn't remember either. But I remember when it happened. Were we sitting at Cafe Rio? No, we were in your office. Really? We were sitting there looking at proofs for what would have become roadkill magazine that ultimately turned into overkill magazine which was just a like rat rod feature car magazine yep and we were sitting there trying to name that magazine and brandon came up with roadkill and named the magazine and then we stole the name for the youtube show and then the magazine didn't happen for a little while and then it finally launched as overkill but that's where the name came from it was brandon yep yep brandon also figured out how to move the roof and quarter panels on NASCARLO. He did invent that. Yep. yep. And uh, he's, dude, he's a very creative and smart guy. And a uh, hell of a photographer, too. But uh, yeah, Brandon's come up with a lot of the stuff that has impacted our lives. I can't think if he's ever been briefly in a roadkill. Was he in the episode where we built the Fury? Yeah, he's... Alana he, was for He's a been in episodes before. Um... I don't remember what it was, but did we ever shoot an episode? I remember that tea bucket thing we were building with Speedway Motors and Tom that and Brandon. That was never in Roadkill. It was never in Roadkill? No, that was just a Hot Rod Magazine deal. Hmm. Okay, that was sort of a retread, so I'm going to go for one last question. James De Silva, why do you guys always run the wrong transmission in the Rotson? Yeah, T5's got to go. What's next on that? Are we actually going to put an automatic in it? Right, well, we've, uh, we've run the wrong one because originally it was the right one. You know, when a 300 horsepower V6, it's it was kind of okay. It was okay. Yeah. Um, the moment we turboed it, it became the wrong one. Yeah. And I think it's just been a, a case of time and simplicity. You know, we kept putting it in there because it was what we had. Something would go right back in there. Well, and most recently, it was because we pulled that trans out of the five liter Mustang and just plopped it right in the car. Yeah. But I think it was predictable that it was going to explode once we actually made that much power, which I didn't think we were going to make that much power. 550 was huge. Yeah. So, I genuinely thought I had you covered. When I was on the dyno that day, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. This car weighs nothing. Look how much power we have. And then it broke. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have put drag radials on it. But are, <laughs> are we going to do an automatic? And if we do, the rear end's going to blow up, which means it needs a solid axle. And at that point, it's not a road racy car anymore. It's yeah, a drag car. you could do a T56, like a, a Magnum from Tremec in there, and it would hold up to what that car's yeah. got now. Um, and that would keep it a stick, which is, you know, kind of the heart of the car, so. But the then... It might be too far back. 
Yeah. Well, maybe not a six-speed, then a five-speed. But even then, it would still need a... Uh, like a TKO or something? A solid axle and a four-link. Yeah, that has been a problem because the, the axle stubs are fine. You know, we had those made at, I think, 300M, but the ends of it where it joins the differential, it's just three... No, it's four it, bolts yeah. that are through-bolted, but the, the area there is so small, you can't put a nylock on it. It's just a nut. And it just keeps coming loose. Yeah, you know? and it's it's a really and the dumb design. Will explode. Yeah, yeah, it's like a 280 millimeter ring gear, two nine no, two ninety or three hundred millimeter ring gear. I don't know. You're speaking a foreign language to me right now. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not committing though. What are we gonna do with it? I want. I really would want to see that car go top speed once. Okay. What has it got? And we can do that with a five speed. You know, not going to a drag strip. But didn't you decide it has a four ten in it or something? Yeah, that's the issue with that car. So during that shoot with the Crusher Impala, what I wasn't telling him is when we were driving on the highway, he kept speeding up to like seventy, and that was all that car had. You had nothing. <laughs> I had no gear left in that car, and uh, so top speed is not an option with the transits in there and the rear end. But if we stuck another gear in there in overdrive, we'd be all right. So, so that's your next mission on that thing instead of drag racing? Yeah, I mean, the drag racing thing, we have enough cars to drag race. And the car's light, we know it's quick, but we're just gonna blow up the rear end. So let's put an overdrive trans in it and let's see how fast it'll go. Okay, you can drive for that. All right, I will. What are we gonna compare it to? What are we racing top speed wise? Rotson versus F-bomb? Okay. All right. That'd be fun. Yeah. There you go. Live action discussion of what might happen in a future episode of Roadkill, but in truth, it probably won't. <laughs> F bomb versus 55, drag strip. Rotson versus F bomb, top speed. Okay, actually, this is gonna like stretch oh, this yeah, episode this out even Let's even longer. This. But our thought for our 75th episode is actually really good. Yeah. And it's along those lines, yep. a bunch of comparisons. So yeah. we, let's see if we can put that together. We should do that. Instead of just a parking lot autocross, we're going to just line up cars and compare them against each other. In a bunch of different venues. Yeah. So there you go. See, we really did develop an episode right in front of you while you were watching this episode of Roadkill Extra. cock a doo You need more Roadkill Extra? Go sign up right now.